Well, hi everyone. This is Carrie Beck with How to Homeschool My Child and Homeschool Superheroes. And I'm excited to be with you this weekend. I've been putting some other posts up and I've got lots of posts that will be going up today and tomorrow. I'll be back this evening to talk about um, getting rid of the overwhelm and the stress and stuff like that. But I'll talk about that later. What I want to talk to you right now about is inspiring your kids to love learning. And for me, I had three kids and they all had different personalities. And so I had to really look at each child and think, okay, this is what this child needs to encourage a love of learning. This is what this child needs to encourage a love of learning. This is what this child needs. Now, does that mean I was like doing everything individual all day long the whole time? No, I was actually, um, I'm gonna share a couple of tools, some things that I actually did I think that helped my kids love learning. Just so you know, um, I homeschooled for 10 years. I was a public school teacher for six years, but all my kids are grown and out of the house. So I speak from some experience that I really tried these things out. I'm not just making them up or reading about them and sharing. I really did live through some of this. So as people are popping on, feel free to leave a comment, maybe tell how many kids you're homeschooling, or if you have an idea on love of learning, please share it. We're here to help each other. So what am I gonna share today? I wanna talk about some ideas about love of learning. The first one I would say is we need to talk about you. Too often, I think moms want instant change in our kids. And so we do this really cool, fun activity, or we go on a field trip, or we do something that does encourage a love of learning for that day. And then they go back to the bad attitude or the not, they maybe are doing their work, but they're not really loving it. So I would really encourage you to have patience. And sometimes that patience to encourage a level of learning is going to take years. I know that's not what you wanted. You probably want a little magic bullet or a magic pill you could give your kids. And all of a sudden they love homeschooling and love learning. Because I'm going to be really honest. My kids didn't always love homeschooling. Sometimes they really didn't like it at all. But over time, given time, they grew to love learning. All my kids love to learn. They love to read now. They, two of them have their own children, so they are encouraging a love of learning in their, in their kids as well. And so what I discovered is it does take time. And let me just share a story. I've shared it many times before, but we were on our way. We live an hour and a half from Houston. I was taking the kids to a museum in Houston. And so we load everyone up in the morning and we drive down there and we pull in the parking lot. And my son Hunter was about, I don't know, seven or eight years old. And he just went, oh no, not this museum. He thought we were going to the health museum where you get to walk through the mouth and you see this long breathing and you get to exercise and see how your um, energy respiratory and all sorts of stuff. He thought that's where we were going. No, we were going to the Fine Arts Museum. And so we get in there and I know he is just dreading it because he didn't like art at all. And he's like, I said, you listen to two or three of the Monet audios. And then right next door in the same museum, there's a Star Wars exhibit. And so we'll go there because he was really into Star Wars at the time. And so did that inspire him to love learning? Not really, but, or love art? But if you would fast forward 10 years, we are in um, London. And in London, I wanted to go to the National Gallery of Art. And Hunter was the only one in my family that would go to the National Gallery of Art. I share that story to let you see that it takes time. Change in me takes time. Change in our kids takes time. And so we really want to inspire a love of learning by being patient. Now, how could you do that? One idea I would encourage you to do is use topics that your kids are interested in. Not that you're interested in. You might be developing a unit study. Choose your child's interest and do things that your kids are going to be interested in. Just before, about an hour or so before this, I actually posted a a blog post that I wrote called Grace Week. And it's all about finding what your kids are interested in and then sort of zeroing in on that. You can go read about this, but in a nutshell, it is three weeks of mom choosing the study and one week of the child's choosing the study. So it's sort of a month long cycle and we did it. I tell some stories, you can go read. I'm not gonna go over that. You can go read it in the blog post, but that would be one way 
of uh, taking a child's interest and then letting them um, uh, choose on the fourth week of every month what they're going to study. Another way that I have done it is, especially like in writing, you know, if you're going to, or really in a lot of subjects, reading, um, grammar, you can choose according to a child's interest. My, uh, again, Hunter was having, he was about sixth grade, he was going to write a, pair, a paper on a person. And we're studying Rome, and I'm thinking, oh, yes, he could write about the Roman emperors. So I, I proposed that topic to him, and he just rolled his eyes like, really, Mom? No way. And so um, he wasn't into history, although he loves history now. Again, time. It takes time to get that, and sometimes kids take a long time. Um, so I started thinking, does it really matter what person he writes about. The point is learning how to write a good paragraph and how to describe this. And it was actually gonna be a five paragraph paper with the intro and a conclusion and the body paragraphs. And so what did we do? I thought, you know what, we just bought a book on Derek Jeter. For those of you that don't know, he's a famous baseball player, he's retired. And I came to him and I said, what if you write your paper on Derek Jeter? Oh my gosh, his eyes lit up and he did a really good job. My guess is he did a much better job writing that paper on Derek Jeter than he would on a Roman emperor. Why? Because he was interested in it. So look at way where your kids are interested, you know, and really dive into that. You can even do it with grammar. In the same Derek Jeter book, I took a paragraph out of it. I typed it up. I made some mistakes and Hunter had to correct the grammar mistakes. He was much more interested in that than some workbook that just has sentences and things. Same with reading. He was reading a book that he was actually interested in. So find things, and that didn't just disrupt my whole thing. I didn't have to make a whole unit on baseball or anything. We just had a five paragraph paper that he needed to write about a person, and I let him choose the topic instead of me choosing the topic. Yes, I know in the university they'll be told what to write about, but for now, I would rather them learn how to write well and write about a topic they're interested in. And so that would be number two. First, you need to give yourself grace and patience waiting for your child. Their changes in their attitude about learning it isn't going to change overnight. Number two, use your child's interest and uh, in a wide variety of ways. I've already talked about that. And then three, we're going to come back to you. Start with you, child, you. Enthusiasm, an example. Are you an example for your kids? Are you enthusiastic about learning? I always loved learning. I was sort of a school person and I liked school, but um, I didn't like to read. And so I grew into that. My kids know I love to read and I believe just modeling a love of reading has turned them into ones that love to read. Now, I'm, I guess I'm picking on Hunter, so we'll just stick with him for now. He did not like to read and I had to search for books that he would like. But fast forward now, we're, we exchange titles all the time. In fact, last weekend, we were just talking about some of our recent books that we've read and sharing titles for that. I'm enthusiastic about learning. I was a good example. What kind of role model are you? And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this later, more about moms later on. But is your role model, is your example, what are, that you're setting with your kids, that this is the most important thing because this is what you're doing and scrolling all the time? Or do your kids see that you love books that you are reading? And I don't mean just like textbooks trying to figure out how to teach something. I mean like you really enjoy books or you enjoy cooking. And if you do, and my kids all know I love to cook, I taught them how to cook. And for the most part, I think they all, even Hunter was like, um, coming out of college, hey mom, will you give me another cooking lesson? And so I come in here and we teach them how to do things um, in the, here in the kitchen. You are modeling something. Is it positive or is it negative? Are you giving them a good example, <clears throat> excuse me, about love of learning? Or are you just sort of shoving things in their face and saying, this is learning? You must learn, you know? So I would say be enthusiastic. 
My mom is so enthusiastic about the things she loved. She was a good role model for me, a good role model in praying and reading her Bible. And she consistently every morning starts her day with prayer and reading her Bible. And I remember growing up, she was that role model for me. I wanted to be a similar role model for my kids. So I wanted to be enthusiastic and ex example. My mom, I've told this story before, she loves birds. And so all my kids were exposed to birds and they got bird houses and they studied bird nests when they were at the farm. My mom loves gardening. And so every time they had cousin camp, part of that weekend was spent letting the kids plant different vegetables so that when they came back with mom and dad with us, then they reap the rewards of being able to eat the green beans that they planted. My mom was enthusiastic. Did my kids read a book about growing things or about birds? Not really. They learned it just by watching grandma and by her enthusiasm and her excitement about birds, about gardening. And there's other things as well. The Bible is another one that they know that grandma loves. Uh, the Bible. And so she was a good role model. She's a good role model for me. She's been a good role model for her grandkids as well. So number one, as a mom, be patient. Love of learning does not happen overnight. Give yourself grace and give your kids grace. Number two, um, choose your topics that you're going to study sometimes according to your kids' interests, not yours. And then number three, be a good example and be enthusiastic. Now, let's back up. We're talking about love of learning. Do your kids have the tools of learning? And I think that's super important. And so let's talk about tools of learning. I'm not going to go into them, but I have a course that covers um, seven tools of learning and 15 strategies for a love of learning. And I've decided that this weekend I'm going to put that on sale you can save $15 on that particular course this weekend. There's a link in the description. I also, and I will put a link, I think it's actually um, on another one of my posts, I'm giving another free class and it will be a lot longer and a lot more detail. And it's not gonna be just more about moms. I'm gonna give three strategies and give a lot more examples in my master class on Tuesday. And it's called Encourage a Love of Learning. And it's free and I'll put the link to where you can actually sign up for that. But there is so much with love of learning that I developed it into a six week course. And so you're able to save $15 on that course. You will learn seven tools of learning that you can use with your kids. So for instance, discussions. Discussions are a great tool. We, you're like, we homeschool, how do you do discussions? Well, right over there's our dinner table and we had discussions every night at the dinner table. That's another soapbox, you better. I think it's important you have dinner together. And I was rereading some of my studies. They say the number one indicator of a child's success in school or education is whether they ate dinner together as a family. And I thought, wow, that is, that's very telling. So I would really encourage you to, um, to eat dinner together. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. So seven tools of learning. We will also go through the 15 strategies of more strategies of love of learning, and they will go through it. Every week you get a video and I tell you which minutes to watch. And then I will tell you what pages in the book to do, what study guide questions to do, and then what parts of the transcript that you need to read. And so it's step by step. You know, moms get overwhelmed when they buy it. They, they're like, yeah, rah, rah, I want to go learn about this. And then they've got these videos and these books and they don't really know what to start. So we've taken it and broken it down into bite-sized pieces just for you so you won't be overwhelmed. And so each week we will go through the different topics. And I actually start with goals because I think it's even in love of learning, we need to have some goals and a vision of where we're going. And then we're going to talk about the tools of learning. Then we're going to talk about... Um, love of learning and that's actually two different weeks and then the final week is sort of transitioning to letting your kids learn independently hopefully if you give them the tools of learning and a love of learning they will become learners for a lifetime lifetime learners and so the end is more about how do we transition them away from me did you know a liberal education is not conservative liberal a liberal education is really very good 
And it's because it liberates your student from the teacher. And so you will liberate them from the teacher if you give them the tools of learning and a love of learning as well. All right, there's a coupon code there that you can use to actually uh, save $15 on our love of learning course. It expires Sunday night at midnight. And so if you have any questions, let me know. And then leave a comment. I'm giving away a $10 gift card for someone who has commented on all my posts through the weekend. And so each post I um, offer you a question to answer in the comment. So you don't just have to say thank you or you're welcome or whatever. So if you have any questions about love of learning, if you have any ideas on a love of learning, please leave them in the comments so we can help each other. I am Carrie Beck with How to Homeschool My Child and Homeschool Superheroes. Y'all have a great day and I'll be back around 4.30.